up guys welcome back to the channel okay today's video today is a pretty good day at least for a video and for my running at least before I've actually started it, I'm saying it's a good day. But today I'm doing a VO2 max test. Some of you may not know what VO2 max is. So in a nutshell, your VO2 max tells you how many milliliters of oxygen are being used per kilogram of your body weight. That's a bit scientific, but what it really tells you is your current cardiovascular fitness, and it gives you an indication of your potential. When you know your VO2 max, you know your aerobic potential, which can give you an idea of how you perform at different race distances. Now, the best way to measure your VO2 max is in a lab, and you've probably seen it. It's a 20 minute test. They have someone hooked up to a treadmill with the straps attached to them in case they fall. They've got a big mask on, and they're measuring the oxygen and the carbon dioxide that's being inhaled and exhaled. That is the premium way to do it. However, I don't have access to a lab right now, but what I do have is the Polar Vantage V2. And the Polar Vantage V2 actually has a, a feature on it where it's a running test and it will run me through a test. It will give me very precise directions on how to conduct this test, how fast to run, what efforts to run at, so it can give me a VO2 max at the end. Now, since this is based on heart rate and wrist-based heart monitors are, I don't know, sketchy at best, but Polar was kind enough to send me their H10 chest strap heart rate monitor. This thing is the gold standard in measuring heart rate. So if I wanna get a precise measurement, this is what I'm gonna be wearing. It's kind of warm out this morning. It is 60 degrees, which is 15.56 Celsius. And while that may not seem too warm, the humidity is 98%. So it is going to be a soaker. I am going to be wearing my Atreyu running shoes because, well, they're the lightest shoes I have right now. But let me run you through the watch and just show you how the watch actually runs me through how to do the VO2 max test. All right, to access the running test, we enter the menu and scroll down to the tests. Here's how it's gonna work. So first of all, we can go to the how-to directions. This gives us a rundown of what the actual test is. It says the test begins with a warm-up, which is about 10 minutes to run at least 10 minutes. After a proper warm-up, you press the start button. Then you need to reach the initial speed for the test to start. I have it set to nine minutes a mile. Now, while nine minutes a mile might seem a little slow to get started, if I start it too fast, I won't be able to complete the test because I'll be going too fast too quickly. So the test has to last a minimum of six minutes. It's like a continual increase in speed as the test progresses. This is what the screen looks like when you're actually doing the test. The, boot, the blue value on the top shows the steadily increasing target speed that you should follow as closely as possible. The white value right below it is the current speed. The watch is gonna tell me if I'm running too fast or too slow, and the test will end if I don't follow the speed close enough. The test does allow me to do a sub-maximal or a maximal effort. To do the sub-maximal effort, I have to reach at least 85% of my maximum heart rate. Since I've had this Polar Vantage V2, I haven't done a maximal heart rate effort, so I use the old 220 minus your age, which gives me a maximum heart rate of 177. 85% of that is 150. So I have to get let my heart rate get at least to 150 for a sub-maximal heart rate. If I do reach 177, because I've preset that as my maximum heart rate, it will be counted as a maximal effort. All right, nothing else for it. It is time to get out there and start this test. I'm not wearing a shirt because, well, I'm gonna be soaked in just a few minutes. I am wearing my hat just to streamline everything, but I'm not wearing sunglasses because I think it's foggy out. I keep looking out the window. Maybe not foggy, but it's, it's very humid. No sunglasses yet. I will be carrying the GoPro throughout the test, although I don't know if I'm gonna be filming. I will catch up with you guys after my warm up and just, you know, let you know how the warm up went. Although the warm, warm up's gonna be pretty easy running, so I'm expecting it to go quite well. See you in a few. As I suspected, the warm-up is going very well. Nice and easy. All right, uh, I did about 21 minutes of warm-up. Nice and easy. Uh, a couple of pickups just kind of turning my feet over and the watch was vibrating as I got into zone three. I know at least the notifications are working on the watch. Polar says that the warm up is supposed to be kept in zones one or zone two. Uh, you can see behind me, I am at a track, but I have decided against doing this test on the track just because the constant loops, I'm worried it's gonna mess with the GPS and maybe not give me the most accurate pacing. So I have a pretty empty road to Sunday morning there's gonna be no traffic out there today. I'm just gonna leg it on the road and um, 
should give me a nice GPS track with an accurate pace. After 2020 of barely doing any speed work whatsoever, I mean, it was the year of the easy run for me. And then taking six weeks off due to injury, I'm not expecting much, but anything is going to be a success. See, I can't lose. I'm a winner before I've even started because I'm kind of starting from scratch. All right, come with me. Okay, I just pressed start and it told me the test will start as soon as I reach a nine minute pace, which is right now. Tricky because I'm running too fast. Nine minute pace is a bit slow to start off, especially after a warm up. And let me catch back in when the effort picks up. So I'm about one minute in, I guess, and I'm having a bit of trouble keeping my actual pace on target. It's like the GPS isn't updating my speed quick enough. It shows me running way too fast and it shows me running way too slow and it's I've barely made any changes. I think it's gonna get a little more accurate as I speed up. The speed increase on this test is constant. It's ticking down like, like a countdown timer. Right now running at a 7.42 pace. Things are looking good. Target pace now, 6.56. My heart rate's at 145. Target pace, now six minute a mile. Heart rate's 161. Now it's getting tough. Target pace, 537. 172 heart rate. All right, test was over. I have to wait till I get home to actually see the results, but last time I checked my pace, it was 516, but I was unable to hold on to that. And the recommended pace started dropping quicker and quicker and quicker. I just couldn't hang on. But last time I looked at my heart rate, it was up to 178 a minute, which is good because that, that means this effort will count as a maximal effort. Let me finish this cool down. I'm a couple miles from home, which is a good thing. So I get to cool down for a good amount of time. But look at the results as soon as I'm back. Nothing feels better than running easy after a hard effort. And you can see the fog really rolled in since I started my run. And I am soaked. As a little extra motivation today, I did wear a new pair of Path Project shorts that I just got a few days ago. I was saving them for the first run today. I got the Graves 7 inch. Man, they are the, the only shorts to run in, I'm telling you. Hi guys. Uh, the A2 Max test in the bag. Let me start the screen recording of my phone, throw it up on the screen. I guess the results, that's the first thing you guys want to hear about. Uh, my VO2 Max was, me was measured at 61. Pretty happy with that. My watch was measuring my VO2 Max at 59 before this test, but that was just based on my everyday runs. My maximum heart rate, I got a new Max HR of 179. I've got a feeling that if I was in a race, I could have got my heart rate a couple of beats higher. There's something about being in a race where you can push yourself that much more. I knew I was coming to the end of the test as far as my ability goes. Probably, you know, sandbagged it, put it in, you know, put it to sleep a little early. If I was racing, probably could have held on a bit longer. Who knows? Didn't feel like it at the time, for sure. Average heart rate, 140. Average pace. This is for my, the warm up, the cool down, and the actual uh, time trial or VO2 max test, 740. Maximum power was 555 watts. Let me just throw this graph up on the screen right now. And this shows my pace and my heart rate together. And you can see here that uh, my pace maxed out at 515 a mile at 178 heart rate. I don't know if it was really 515 a mile. I think it was a little slower than that. That could have been a GPS anomaly, but when I looked down, I did see that and uh, and the watch recorded it. The Polar Vantage V2 does a pretty good job at walking you through the VO2 max test. Definitely when it's coupled with the H10 heart rate monitor. I don't think I would have had the same results if I was relying on the optical sensor in the watch, just because in experience, it sometimes picks up my cadence rather than my heartbeat. Whatever, it, it worked out well today. Probably repeat this test in, I don't know, a couple months. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I improve, if I regress. But yeah, I am, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the results of this test, especially because of the time off. All right, guys, let me know. Uh, let me know whatever you want to let me know in the comments. Have you done a VO2 max test? You know, we're not, we're not racing too much nowadays, so it's fun to get out there and push yourself more than we ordinarily would. It seems like forever since I've pushed myself to that maximum heart rate limit, and I feel pretty good now. So I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna eat breakfast. Can't wait for those bananas and peanut butter. That's, that's what motivated me to get through this test. All right, guys, new video in a couple of days. If you've made it this far, 
Thanks so much, guys. Why don't you throw me a sub if you're not subscribed? And of course, give this video a thumbs up. Giving this video a thumbs up is like the biggest way to say that you enjoyed it. It tells YouTube so YouTube can push it out to anyone else that may get any value from it. All right, guys, be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days. Mm -hmm.